the forgiveness of Jesus, it never runs out. And it doesn't run out just because you're so good. The reason why he is always forgiving, the main reason really, is because of his role now as high priest. You see, we know that Jesus is a king, the ultimate king. But he is also, according to the scripture, the ultimate high priest. And when you study the way high priests function, they live to forgive. All of the things in the Bible that was said about the high priest and how they functioned was all written exactly and precisely the way it was to foreshadow and parallel prophetically what the ultimate high priest, Jesus, would do for us. When God freed the Israelites from Egypt, they wandered in the wilderness. And God didn't just want to free them from the Egyptians. He wanted to have a relationship with them. But in order for the Israelites to have a relationship with God, they would have to be holy because God is holy and you can only have a relationship with him and enter his presence if you too are holy. <laughs> but there's a problem. It's impossible for humans in this life to ever be holy enough to stand before God in a good relationship. So therefore, in the book of Leviticus, we see that God created sacrifices, he created tabernacle, and he created the role of the high priest. And these were all designed so that the people, the Israelites, could be free from sin so they could have a relationship with God. High priest fact number one. The high priest was the only one who could enter into the sacred room called the Holy of Holies. So what is that? Well, in the Old Testament, God had Moses build the tabernacle. And the tabernacle is basically a huge tent that would sometimes have the presence of God in it. God's presence would come into the tabernacle. And in the tabernacle was a special room, a sacred and holy room called the Holy of Holies. And in this room, this is where the high priest would come and bring animal sacrifices, the blood of animals into the room. And he would bring it once a year on the Day of Atonement. And this would represent the sins of the people. And once the high priest brought this animal sacrifices into the room, basically for the whole year, the people would be free from sin. And then they could have a relationship with God. They would be pure before God. So how does that relate to Jesus? <laughs> well, according to the Bible, everything that was written about the high priest entering a sacred holy room with blood and a sacrifice to make people free from sin, all of that was written to point to Jesus. And it makes sense. The Bible says that Jesus, instead of going to the Holy of Holies with the blood of goats and animals, he used his own body, his own blood. And he didn't enter into the Holy of Holies that was built in a tent. No, he went to the ultimate Holy of Holies, the throne room of God. He went to the throne room of God and took his own body, his own blood on behalf of us. And he didn't do it just once a year like the Old Testament high priest did. He did it for eternity. He did it one time, and that's the only time he'll ever have to do it. Which means that just as the high priest allowed the people to be free from sin for a year, you are free from sin forever. Basically, his death was the ultimate day of atonement. Look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 7. See, the book of Hebrews really breaks down the parallel between the high priest and Jesus as the ultimate high priest. And in verse 7 it says, But only the high priest entered the inner room, and only once a year, and never without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins that the people had committed in ignorance. Verse 11, But when Christ came as high priest of good things that are now already here, he went through the greater more perfect tabernacle, the one not made with human hands, that is to say, not the one of this creation, and he did not enter by the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place by his own blood, obtaining eternal 
redemption. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, the second role of the high priest in the Old Testament, they would offer a sin offering and a peace offering. The sin offering represented the removal of sin and the peace offering represented the people having a new relationship, a relationship of peace with God. And here's something amazing. The peace offering, before it could be offered, the people would have to eat of it. It was the only offering that the people could eat of. And the reason why they would eat of the peace offering first is because it represented how they were taking part of this new life of purification. Now think about this. Before the offering would be made, the people would eat of it. And they ate of it because it represented them taking part of a new life. <laughs> and then the high priest would offer the offering. There's revelation in that. Notice how Jesus said, before he was to offer his body on the cross, he told his people, he said, you must eat of this offering. <laughs> what was the offering? He said, you must eat of my body. This is why we have the Holy Communion. Because symbolically it represents us eating and taking a part of the offering of Jesus' blood and taking part of a new life in Christ. The fourth role of the high priest was to teach the people God's word. The high priest would teach the people about God. They would instruct the people about the Torah or the law. And that was one of their major roles. They were a teacher. Well, notice how Jesus said that he was our teacher. <laughs> you see, as the high priest, his role is to teach. That's one of the roles. And this is the reason why Jesus, he did all of the things that the high priest had to do. Before he offered his body as a sacrifice, he let his disciples know that before I go, I'm also going to teach you. How am I going to teach you? I'm going to leave you my Holy Spirit, which will teach you everything you need to know. This is why when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive so much insight, revelation. The Bible opens up and you see things that you never saw before. Why? Because Jesus, the great King and High Priest, is teaching you. He's doing his role. That's why in John 14, verse 26, it reads, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Jesus was letting his people know, hey, when I go and deal with this sin thing by offering my body and resurrected on the third day to sit in the presence of the Father in the great Holy of Holies, I will still fulfill my role of teaching you by giving you my spirit. He's doing it all prophetically and fulfilling his role as the high priest. We see that Jesus is the ultimate high priest. He lives to forgive. And everything that the high priest did was all done to illustrate the role of Jesus as the forgiver who made it so that we can always have an awesome relationship with God. So never feel like you've done anything to keep you from approaching God. Because when God sees you, <laughs> he sees you with eyes of love and favor. Because when God sees you, he doesn't see sin. He doesn't see something unworthy. When he sees you, he sees holiness, man. He sees righteousness. He sees goodness. Because you are covered by the blood of Jesus, the King and High Priest who lives. <laughs>